Welcome back to the latest episode of the Real Tech Talk podcast. Today, brand new, we are talking to my boy, Adam Stark. Adam Stark is solving a problem that we have dealt with in this industry forever. But before we get into that, even more interesting, his cousin, Tony Stark, the Iron Man, not coming through today, so hold your horses. But I can't wait to hear what my boy Adam is talking about. Stay tuned, watch it, hit it, like it, plug it. In addition, you know, we got our first sponsor. I was telling you guys, people are knocking down the door on sponsorship right now. Where are all the banks? Where are all the consultants trying to get to this marketplace? I got them. They're coming in every week. Reach out to me if you're interested in getting in front of these guys. Welcome back to the Real Tech Talk podcast with E Breezy. That's why we're here, bro. This is Real Tech Talk. Boom shock a lot. So who the hell are you, bro? You know, what are you into? What do you do? Dude, you can keep it real here. Tell me. Tell me about these real estate players. Eric Brody is the managing principal of CEMVC LLC. All opinions expressed by Eric and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of CEMVC LLC. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. Clients of CEMVC LLC may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. Welcome back to the latest episode of Real Tech Talk Podcast. Now, before we start, I want to tell you, I started this whole venture shenanigans in the podcast because I said, I want to look at technologies that make me a better builder, developer, manager, and the way you live in my assets. And today, my guest does just that. So this is a technology near and dear to my heart. Also, what I find fascinating about it is he has a cousin that's very, very famous. You may know him as Iron Man, Tony Stark. Today, I am lucky enough to have Ad Rock, Ad Stark, Adam Stark of Jet.Build. So everyone, please, please clap it up for Jet Build crowd. (laughs) Adam, thank you so much for coming through. Look, I know a bunch about this man, but I want him to tell a little bit about himself, how he got into this tech business. And first and foremost, thank you for coming through, man. You know, you don't have to do this. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. I understand that the uh, celebrity status just got thrown onto me, but... (laughs) But actually, I feel like uh, you know I'm in in the presence of uh, a celebrity. Uh, oh yeah, for yeah. the for the fifteen hundred to two thousand people watching us. Yeah, yes, is, you this, know this is going to be huge, and I can't huge. wait for it to be huge. Yeah, yeah. I'd also like to say uh, another one of our guests who did not come branded. You know, where is like the jet built tats, bro? Where is the <laughs> jet built T-shirt? Where is the gear? Yeah, you invited me in winter. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> you know what? I also before we get started, you know. I, I keep forgetting, we are now sponsored. I have a sponsor. It's called Annex Ventures. It's our first sponsor. And I want you to know, people have been banging down the doors to sponsor this podcast because of guys like you. So like, if you're interested in sponsoring, you know, let us know. I mean, I'm sifting through it. Like, I don't know if we're actually going to choose them. But, you know, we'll see, you know, so make sure you reach out because JetBuild and Annex and Real Tech Talk would love your sponsorship. Back to why we're here. So we're here with my boy, Adam Stark. Adam Stark, welcome. Thank you, as we were saying. Now, tell me a little bit about how you got into tech, right? Because that wasn't the original position. And then how you got into JetBuild specifically, and then what problem it's solving. So hit it up. Let the audience know the deal. Uh, absolutely. So um, <clears throat> I love the founder story for JetBuild. Uh, so myself and my co-founder, Joseph, uh, you know, we both grew up as as enemies, essentially. We played against each other in uh, high school sports. What uh, sport? Uh, soccer, mainly. Um, then fast forward a bunch of years, both end up in the Israeli military in the same enlistment uh, in the airborne division, so paratroopers. Again, fast forward a bunch of wait, years. Wait, wait, can we stop for a second? Yeah. Isn't that like special yeah. forces? So, so yeah, I served in uh, special forces. So unit. am I in the presence of an absolute stone cold killer? Because you know how much I love that kind of shit, dude. You know, that's my shit. <laughs> But, you the know, streets of Brooklyn weren't that hard, you know. <laughs> this is the real deal, people. <laughs> but but I can't I can't rap like you though. So I know I know. So, so but, but before we get into it, so yeah. how many moves until you would have cut my head off? Well, you know the saying. Chop me up into little pieces. Y- you know the saying, right? I-, I feel I don't have to say it. Even. Oh, I like that, man. This- Damn it. Where was I? <laughs> I was not in the military. Damn, I was over here putzing around on the streets of Brooklyn. <laughs> Well, no, that's dope. All right, so go on. So you met you met with your business partner, but it wasn't you guys were just 
Which is homeboys now, I guess, right? C- correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, so fast forwarding from military service, uh, both end up in New York City working for real estate developers, similar development firms. Similar Why development positions. though? Uh, so speaking for myself, yeah. uh, I love the aspect of designing, the aspect of building something that's tangible, mm-hmm. um, and then just the aspect of getting shit done. Right. right? So I felt that I mean, that's all of the, <laughs> the main premise of real estate that's development. <laughs> People are always like, you know, what's the secret sauce? Like, can you execute goals? Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, fresh. Um, so finishing uh, undergrad had a good opportunity. In Where'd you go real to school? Development Northeastern for undergrad. Boston. And, uh, yeah, right? in Boston. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, then later on NYU for for an MBA. Um, oh, he's smart too, guys. You got to throw in that MBA. Look, it wasn't. It's not MIT and Harvard, but you know, still, it's something. <laughs> um, so, uh, in in that experience in real estate, uh, myself and Joseph, we have a combined fifteen years and a billion in construction managed. Uh, so d- during that experience, and I think so, was it developer builder that you went to work de- for? Developer builder, yeah, uh-huh. correct, correct. Um, and in that experience, I think something that almost everyone can relate to. So if you're someone who's remodeled your bathroom or if you're someone who's built a 70 floor, you know, high rise, you understand that y- you should have or you felt, uh, um, I guess, uh, friction as it relates to your budget and as it relates to your schedule, right? What, what, why Listen, should that be? I know I have a TV show on it with the real deal all <laughs> so, about like the friction <laughs> and, and like trying to tell the people right. like – how frustrating it could possibly be to like sort of shed light that it shouldn't be that frustrating. So you found that like exactly. the, no shit, you exactly. know what I mean? Yeah. So we we were the people, we were the client, right? We were the people that understood, you know, trying to manage multiple companies and multiple teams within those companies in this process. And you're saying each company is a project, it, right? Exactly, is that yeah. like, so like you're just, you know, you, we, you know, it's funny because in the accounting process of it, which most people don't understand, there's a specific code section for construction and you look at it as a whip report, like work in progress. Mm-hmm. Like so multiple projects, projects you're saying at the same time each one is its own entity exactly yeah exactly cool uh and and in that process we don't have a tool to manage the flow right and when i say flow that's everything from like you you touched on right the accounting aspect of it the operations aspect of it the the progress right reporting uh, so what did you do well how did it work (laughs) so you know similar to what is industry standard essentially right it's industry standard yeah over budget, over schedule. It's messing up and then reacting after the fact, right? Um, By the way, I came up with a saying for it. You want to hear it? Yeah, I do want to hear it. Absolutely. So everyone's like, you know, you're raising all this capital for development. You're supposed to be like precise. And it's funny, coming from the military, you know, there's like something they call genius by this guy, uh, Karl von Clausewitz, this Prussian general, who was like, basically wrote this thick book like this. And at the end of it, he goes, and those who are successful, we don't really know why. They're just super like intuitive and smart, right? (laughs) So everyone comes to me and says, so what's your motto on development and construction? And I'm like, reasonableness and adaptability. They're Mm -hmm. like, what? I'm like, yeah. You know, we don't know how exactly we're going to get there. I know what the drawings say. I know what the cost is. But the general or the leader in that is ducking and weaving to get to that goal. It's not a precise, like, science, right? right? It's the art of building and developing. Right. So to kind of, uh, I guess, level with people's understanding and and just in general, right, I like to kind of compare it to whether it's uh, an Excel, uh, you know, Having the Excel as, as you know, so Excel a, a was one way you were managing, right? Um, but now going to like how one would imagine an accounting department, right? You wouldn't allow your accounting department to function without Excel, you wouldn't allow them to function without a QuickBooks or NetSuites, for example. Sure, so why are we allowing our contracting teams or our developers to operate these complex projects, right? To create, as you say, right, to create a physical, tangible thing from paper without a solution, without a product, right? To so, what that. you're saying right now. People would be shocked to know that construction and development is being managed with paper, email, and like, what would you call that, 2007 technology? Like, I don't know. I don't even remember when I got my first email. You know, you're the young man. I call call it Windows 95. (laughs) Windows 95 tech. So they wouldn't, they'd be shocked to know that right now, now certain firms are probably starting to understand what you're stating, but Mm -hmm. they would be shocked to know that probably the majority is some Excel, email, an accounting module on the side, mm-hmm. but no centralized or no 
way that we're all looking at the same thing, basically. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. And keep in mind, even if you have like Excel, for example, or organized files on your end, now you're trying to share it across different companies who might, by the way, be using different products, right? So let's say you're using SharePoint, right? Microsoft SharePoint as your file storage. Now your contractor is using uh, Dropbox. How, how are you collaborating? Or there? what about that? They had that for that hot minute. An architect had me on this FTTP site where like every time you logged in, it was a problem, you know, like <laughs> right? you just couldn't figure it out. It was like, right. you know, I'm not... I couldn't, it, felt, it looked like it was like code, like I had to understand code in order to operate it. Right. And and now to take it even a step further, right, we talked about accounting departments as an example. I think that's something people could generally relate to. So th- these are these are uh, departments that are sitting in an office, right? They could just walk over to another desk or pick up a phone, right. resolve something. We're talking about in, in construction development, we're talking about, again, building uh, uh, buildings, right, tangible things from paper and from office to site. So the level of collaboration is infinitely more than your typical de- you know, department in, inside of a business. Uh, and it's not even departments. Some right, are right. other business. Like you're like a company, but you've got 40 subcontractors, exactly. 50 subs, architects, mechanical engineers, structural, geotech, all these exactly. different players, all using different ish in order to build that building. Right. And it's still a paper business. It's still a paper business. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there's so you many... wonder why anything gets built. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's wild. It's wild to think of. Uh, and I, honestly, I laugh at it because it's 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 so crazy that it's laughable, right? Um, there's so many angles to look at as it relates to where process could be improved, where efficiency could be improved. Um, and you, you know, we're we're starting that element of change. We're starting that element of understanding. And we haven't even touched on data, right? We haven't even touched on the conversation or the thought process of where is all of that data going? It's going nowhere right now. Right. So you, so your problem, so the problem that you basically identified was like this is ridiculous, right? This inefficiency, <laughs> yeah. this siloed based way of you know operating and getting information, right? And all this stuff, by the way. Just as an example to our audience is like, there could be a change from an architect. We call them a sketch, Mm -hmm. quick SK, right? But it doesn't get to a bulletin, which is a way in which you're actually going to put it on a document to give it to, let's say, the general contractor to review, let alone the subcontractor has to do it. So by the time that actually gets through, whatever was supposed to be changed could already be done, right? right? Just based on time, just that it's slow, right? Mm -hmm. So like you identified this problem. So then what? Uh, So we have... A ton of, of simple solutions to all of the processes in construction. We'll use the drawings, for example. When you as an architect or you as a contractor, subcontractor, submit a question, for example, through JetBuild product, you have- Well, the... no, no. What I'm saying is you as a young man, ah, you're see. in the fucking development and construction pre-jet, biz. Pre-jet. Pre-jet. Days. Pre-jet. pre-jet days. Right? Okay, We're getting you. there. So gotcha. now it's, all right, you're like, all right, this is whack. Right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. what I think is interesting and what I think that our audience needs to know is what's the typical thing that a guy in our business or a person in our business yeah. says, right? Yeah. Say the same shit. I've been doing this for 35 years, <laughs> right? When you're like, maybe there should be change. They all say the same thing. Yeah. I've been doing this for 35 years. So you hadn't been, right? right? So you right. looked at it differently, yeah, right? So you identified that. So then what? So, Who was the tech, you know, how did you... Right. Do it. So, so what I was doing is uh, phone calls, text messages, emails, uh, an attempt on my own end to kind of document everything, whether it's an Excel sheet or literally just hand notes. Mm-hmm. Again, with the complexities that exist, really just impossible to track everything, right? You could say Excel, I, I would say I'm, I'm generally speaking tech savvy, right? I'm not a coder, but I am tech savvy. I was not able to kind of manage a project in an efficient way with Excel, right? It's not for the industry. Uh, with that being said, and I, I, I laugh at this because I, I think it is laughable. When when I left the company I was working for, when Joseph, my co-founder, left the company he was working for, all of that information was tied to our personal cell phones, right? Word. Right. Or you know, notebooks or whatever scraps that existed, or literal physical. Right. So plant, there's no project right? file. Right. No project file. No way to track. Uh, you know, in in hindsight, historical. No way to um, effectively leverage change management. Right. And this is big deals. These I want deals, I, our audience yeah. to understand. You were building big buildings, correct? Big with buildings, this yeah. issue, this correct. is you know from the developer perspective, correct? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so then, how did you? What did you develop? So that's the problem. I agree with you. By right. the way, I agree. It's crazy. So, so here, exactly. So here's the problem. Joseph, my co-founder, technical founder, understands how to code, and you know we said screw this. This process is crazy. Both of us cannot, uh, you know, mentally uh, allow for such. 
uh, disorganization, uh, went ahead and start building the beta product of Jet. This is back in uh, 2018 on the side as a side hustle. Um, moving forward, which is what that's that's Bezos in the garage. Exactly. You know, yeah. not, 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 you know, <laughs> you know let's go big, people. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. you said I'm gonna code for a what? What'd you say? It was a workflow, like, or how did you, you know, yeah, how did you think about it? So we kind of took what I'll call the basis of uh, um, operation flow. Uh, so you mentioned, you know, the pro, pro um, sorry, uh, plan, uh, you know, markups, for example. So we took RFIs and submittals. Um, as kind of the, the the core of the project, I see that as allowing for process to just so our audience know. So an RFI is an acronym for Request for Information. It's right. the way in which your contractors in the field request information from the design professionals. Because right. lower my hole, you would think that the drawings are perfect. They're human. They never are. Right. So it's a request for information. Then the submittal, right, is actually submitting. This is how I'm solving your two-dimensional image in the real world. So right. I'm submitting either a specification. I'm submitting a data sheet or materials that I'm going to use. And I'm asking the architect or engineers, is this what they thought was supposed to be there? Just so right. everyone kind of understands. And this is the documentation flow right. to make sure there's always a record of what somebody did. Yeah. Thank you for elaborating. Sure. Um, That's so, my job, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, so we saw that as the opportunity to start, right? Mm -hmm. it, it was an easy way to kind of code what you mentioned already, a workflow, right? To say, all right, you know, RFI or submittal was questioned or marked up on X date and time. Uh, next person in the process is for the architect and engineer to review. Uh, beyond that, if it's going to change anything in schedule or budget, the developer needs to be aware of that. And there's your there's your general, you know, typical workflow that we were working off of, a cool. means of tracking uh, what is going on in the project to allow for the balance of items to to proceed. And I guess now it's cloud based, like you're stating, Correct. right? So like, and that, by the way, that technology probably wasn't there in 06, 07, right? Which is why we said the FTTP sites, right? Windows ninety five, right? Windows so ninety. Whenever, sorry, whenever that was. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Windows ninety five. I'm like Commodore sixty four player. <laughs> so now, so you create this, this, um, you start to code it, mm -hmm. right? But. You know, where did that go? Did did you realize that there was such a market demand for that, or you know, how did you know that you were on the right track? For sure, yeah. So, I mean, first of all, to recognize that we essentially were just leveraging it internally, right? Yeah. We, we found a, a use case for ourselves in in beginning to code a solution. Um, as we continue to develop the product and add different features, uh, like like you know, I'll call it low key scheduling features, um, beginnings of you know Gantt chart ability, um, low key budget uh, capacity ability to store files, right? So to have that centralized data, essentially. So these are each like modules, right? Modules, because correct. like you're saying, what the audience may understand is we create a schedule. Mm -hmm. I create a schedule before I ever put a shovel in the ground, right? But the reality is it's a complex business where everything's changing constantly. That schedule is BS, mm -hmm. uh, just FYI so the audience can't understand. You look at a schedule and you say, this is kind of how we're supposed to get there. And then, you know, life happens and it's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. But you look back each time at the schedule each 30 days and say, like, what went right and what went wrong to try to react to moving forward. So you created a schedule module. Mm -hmm. You created an economic one, right? Because – you know, no one, we always like to explain, it's like construction is an invoice, right? People are invoicing in the simplest, we call it a requisition, but it's like each month they're invoicing a little bit of their total project cost as they do it. So you did that as well. So you had an right. economic one, you have a schedule one, you have a flow of information one. What else? Uh, I'll call the submittals and RFI that we touched on, I'll call that the operations, and then essentially just file storage and sharing. Um, so to kind of replace the issue that we were experiencing between, you know, SharePoint, Dropbox, files being too large for email. So those were kind of these like four uh, modules that we built off of. Um, and, you know, today to kind of put some, uh, you know, categories to those, it's accounting, collaboration, construction, and data reporting. I right? think so it's something that's modules. super important. I feel like the, the audience may be interested is the idea of like cloud-based computing and construction like wasn't there, right? They were doing it in tons of other industries. Mm -hmm. It took us a long time to be like, don't you want your information in one location, right? right. So here are my questions. So I understand. All right. And I want to know how you're doing in the rest of it. My question to you is, if everyone is now looking at it, how do you get, how did you deal with the issue that contractors are laggards? How do you get them to understand just what it is, the product that you're creating? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I would say that, and I'm kind of proud to say this, right, is up front when we started with the beta, definitely more difficult because it wasn't a refined product, right? We were building something uh, on the side as a side hustle, mind you, as well, right? Today, it's so easy to use, meaning if a, if a contractor, if a person is using a cell phone, is creating a proposal on their computer, using Jet is easier. Why is it easier? Because it has a template for all of the things that you need, all of the functions that you're already anyways doing uh, in a different way, in a scattered, inorganized way. Now you have a platform to just assist you through that process. I think also just so the audience knows, literally I went to construction school and one of the classes is like make your own submittal, right? Like literally, (laughs) what do you want to see on it? So you're like just saying – I could literally just standardize it and right. put it on. And I'm telling you, like people are probably like, what? You're like, that is an innovation, right? Sometimes being like people think it's like you've changed the world. How about just doing like what's most efficient and then in a central location is changing the world, right? Right, right. exactly. So then, um, so now you create this product. But again, wh- how was the translation? You're saying it was so intuitive. So all you really needed was to show people how it was working. And all of a sudden you started picking up tr- traction on it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, well, I'll say yes and no, right? So in, in the beginning, I'll say called 2019 or so, we had a, a nice product that, w- that was ready to explore with external parties. So we onboarded a design client through our network. Uh, so New York-based uh, developer as well. Um, so they started using our product to kind of test it and leverage it for their own case. With them, we built for the, I'll call it the next year from 2019. So until 2020, we refined it further. We built more features based on their feedback, based on our own, you know, feedback and use cases. Uh, and then we, as an end result, came to the product that it is today that, I mean, granted, we are always refining and always adding. Yeah, software business is a constant refinement. Right, correct. Um, but, uh, you know, around 2020, mid 2020 or so, really a, a refined product that, to answer your question, yeah, you, you go on it, you see the word submittals, it, bring, it walks you through the process of, you know, how to upload a submittal, what information would be relevant, boom, you're done. Uh, scheduling, Wildly easy to create a Gantt chart schedule with dependencies. If you have changes to it, wildly easy to just create those changes. So for the more sophisticated people that are watching, there are competitors in the space, right? right? And I believe that those competitors have been valued, you know, you know, valued very high, right? And Mm -hmm. you're breaking in now. So what was the difference between you and sort of some of these uh, competitors that are out there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we actually, myself and Joseph actually tried to onboard at the time. uh, So pre-jet at the time. Right, because you're you're, you're a young man, technology, (laughs) you knew like if there's a product, let's try. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, And we came across a a few frictions, right? One being price point. Price point was wildly high. Well, they were the only one, right? They had a monopoly basically. Um, well, yeah, I'll call it basically. I believe that other legacy uh, platforms also existed as they do still today. Uh, and I'll touch on the other friction points, which tie those ties those together, which is uh, the 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 platform itself, right? We spoke about user adoption as it relates to people that are not necessarily tech savvy. I couldn't understand those products, right? I look at those products and I, I don't know what to do or where to go on the platform so itself. So the architect, which I, I find, by the way, super fascinating. You know, people probably think, oh, the technology exists, they must be the winner. The reality is when the architecture, like how you've actually designed right. it, is it intuitive? Right. You can win. Like mm-hmm. literally just making it the user experience, which now people are understanding mm-hmm. is so important because you see these apps, or I always like to compare it to banking apps. There's some banking apps that you're like, I'm switching banks because this is just dope. This yeah. is simple. It's easy. There's other ones that have been banks forever, but they're not willing to change. So the idea that just the architecture of the way that you use it could be a winner. Right? Yeah, that's a, that's a great comparison with banking apps. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so just the architecture, right? So it's kind of that classic, you know, some companies were first to market and then the other company, i.e. Jet, understood the the. Uh, uh, I guess, lack of features or lack of UI, UX experience, user interface and user experience that existed. Is that what UX is, user experience? <laughs> All right, I'm just making sure, you know, <laughs> you're talking to old school contractor guy here. Okay, so so now, um, so now, uh, uh, what were the other things that were so different? All right, uh, so I got yeah. the architecture. You said price point was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they're pricing it, but like, okay, you need people to use it, you know? Right, Um so in addition, I'll, I want to tag something to the price point where cool. these other companies will typically ask for your financial information to create a percentage off of your books to price the product. So that was also a friction point that we weren't able to uh, 
use their product, right? Onboard their product with our companies that we're working for. So let me give my audience an example. This yeah, is my, yeah. my genius. <laughs> so back in the day, every time I retain an architect, right? My father was an architect. You go to the architect, right? You go, here's 50,000 square foot building, 100,000 square foot building. How would you like to price it, right? And the architects I always use were like, oh, that's great. The amount of work it will be will be X, Y, Z. You know, the amount of staff I need. And they're pricing your project, right? Mm -hmm. The other architects, the architects that you were like, that you, and they could never prove it, like why you would make more money or not, would say, well, what do you think the hard costs are? And you're like, what do you matter what the hard costs are? And hard costs meaning construction costs. They're like, well, is it going to be 20 million or is it going to be 10 million? You're like, I don't know. I need the design first. They'd be like, well, we're going to charge you based on your hard costs. And I always felt like that was a conflict of interest. Like, yeah. what do you mean? What about if I spend more, I spend less? Like, why would you value be pegged? to the hard cost, which is what you're saying, is the exactly. way in which these, like, it never even made sense to me, I'd never work with them, yeah. right? It's like, no, I want you to look at your job and what, for your love and for you to get it done, what you would wanna charge, what does that have to do with how much I spent? Right, right. So I, I agree with you, I don't even think I could ever call, I wouldn't even speak to that company, is my <laughs> I, point. I, I agree, I couldn't understand it myself. Um, so, so, you know, with all those elements, all those friction points that existed, uh, we said, you know, screw it. This isn't going to work. The companies that we proposed it to that we were working for at the time also said, no way, get out of here. Uh, and, you know, here we are now with Jet. So tell, how is it going? Tell us, like, in the marketplace, what's the deal? Yeah. Absolutely. How much have you raised? If you want to shout out any of the people that gave you capital um, and, like, where are you at today? Absolutely. Yeah. So we did a uh, very, very recently did a pre seed round. Um, we uh, with leading with uh, Shadow Ventures, sorry, as, as our VC, uh, guys in uh, Atlanta. Um, amazing, Atlanta. Nice. <laughs> Atlanta. Uh, amazing team, amazingly supportive. Um, we also have Annex on board, super happy about that. Uh, what we're doing in the market right now is kind of creating awareness, creating growth, onboarding more clients. Uh, been an amazing experience speaking to uh, these larger enterprise companies, so companies that are doing you know global fifty billion in construction value, who have dedicated innovation arms to their companies, and they're looking for products like Jet to implement through their business. And have units. you locked any of those up where they're doing projects over mul either multiple states or just multiple projects? Uh, so we're in the sales cycle. I mean, this is all very, very new, right? So myself, don't worry, this isn't coming out for like six weeks. So <laughs> that's fine. You probably locked them all up. So exactly, yeah. Hopefully by then, yeah. Um, so I mean, for context, Joseph and I jumped on full time uh, in July. Oh wow! Um, and started these conversations with the firms that I just referenced. I don't know in the past month or so. Uh, and they have that beef with those old companies, right? They, and they they're have like major beef, major mm -hmm. beef. It's it's always. Uh, a I, I mean, for me, I think it's funny. It's funny feedback to hear from them, the, the aggravations that they have with these legacy companies and the inflexibility that those companies have for as a solution for these you know, enterprise global firms. So right now you're in talks in the sales cycle to lock up some of these mar larger firms. And you're talking Correct. about being full-time since July and Correct. it's October. Correct. Like, it sounds to me like the market is starving right now for what Absolutely. you're providing, which is, which is really cool. Um, all right. So where are you guys located? What's your story? Where are you guys New, at? New York City based. Um, but we, you know, being a, a software company, have access to, glo you know, everywhere in the world, global. Um, most and you of our got that international flavor. You were out in the Middle <laughs> exactly. East for a while. So, you know, you'll travel anywhere. <laughs> exactly. You know, so I have a question for you. My biggest issue back in the day with a lot of the companies that were, were, were looking at solving for what you are, because I want the audience to know, it was all server based, right? Like the... the, the I think a lot of people don't understand technology just in order to do what you're doing is changing so fast, which gave you the capability of sort of being able to do this cloud-based system where you can actually all log in from everywhere. The, one of the biggest things I always thought was though, what information are you learning and how are you give, gonna, or what are you thinking about when it comes to aggregating data? So all these guys are now using you. Are you looking to also provide some like, you know, intelligence back to your client based? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's kind of two ways that, that I uh, consider it to look at. One is immediately up front, the ability to have the data insight reporting. So today we have uh, workforce reporting, budget reporting, um, RFI and submittal snapshot, right? So to understand where your project stands in that regard um, and change order reporting. Uh, so with those four data insight reports, you could really quickly and easily at any moment understand kind of a general, you know, kind of macro uh, a level of where where your project sits. 
Um, soon, once we have more data on the product, on the on the platform, we'll be able to do a few things. One is kind of market commodity rates, right? So we'll be able to understand, you know, if you're building in the New York area and you have X amount of steel, it should cost you X per, you know, whatever metric that you want. Uh, if you have, so you're going to start providing that though. It, what do they exactly. call that? Business intelligence, right? It, you're going to start. Yeah. To, are you thinking doing it in AI, or you're going to just have data hackers and data scientists in house looking at it? Right. So, so because you know Joseph is a technical founder, uh, the word AI uh, upsets upsets those in in the, in the technical space. Uh, what do they say? Deep learning. Yeah, or, it's all, it's all like that. yeah, it's all like, augmented it, reality. Right, right. But tell me, I don't want to piss. I don't want to be pissing off the smart guys. <laughs> so like, we'll, he'll say, uh, Joseph will say, like AI is you know a plane understanding how to fly itself, not you know producing kind of data information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but whatever, n neither here nor there. Uh, no, but, no, I love that. Shit. That's <laughs> yeah. super important. You gotta yeah, tell yeah. me. You know, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. Uh, I no do worries. it all the time. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, so so basically, what we will do though with with data uh, as we continue to gather more is kind of create automations in a sense, and also create more uh, proactive learnings. Uh, so the ability to kind of understand something as it's occurring and the ability to react like in real time, right, rather than a, a reactive in hindsight uh, change to your process. You know, that's dope, by the way. And I'll give my conclusion about my 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 feelings on it. But there's something I always like to ask my technologists because I'm always super impressed by them, right? This, this young man, special ops, you know, now he's working in technology, got into development how do you balance that out, right? This is like, we say that we're investing in people, right? At the end of the day, it's like, if there's a problem and they break down, even if they have the dopest like company about it, they fall apart. So what do you do to balance out your life when you have all of this, these things, especially, you know, uh, you know, high octane type of personality that we could understand creates that balance for you. So how do you balance out your life in dealing with all this? I mean, I think what's what's interesting in that question, uh, specifically for me and also for Joseph, is that you know both of us are coming from military backgrounds. So when you say you know what's what's high octane and what's what's balance is we we experienced the extreme of reality. I'll call it right. So so the stress moments were were you know being being shot at or wartime zone. So not not so much business. With that being said, that doesn't mean that obviously doesn't mean business doesn't. You well, know, though, although stress. by the way. You could have tons of PTSD, right? I mean, so like you have to find some kind of balance from that. Correct. So you're, yeah. you you did the extreme. So what what do you do today? And it must be a daily type of thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So kind of the point of saying that was in in experiencing the extreme and being able to take from that learnings and understand, you know, now understanding the the breadth of balance, the range of balance. I think it helps me and helps Joseph kind of create balance in our lives. For me personally, routine is every every morning. It's uh, uh, about an hour and a half to two hours of um, w wellness. I'll call it right. So everything self care is self care. Yeah, yeah, self care. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's kind of no no end to that though. I would advocate for you know middle of the day, 15 minute break at night before you go to bed. You know, 15 plus minutes of of wellness, self care as well. Um, and uh, for me, that's 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 the solution. Listen to me, like you know, that's my shit. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? With all and you know, it's funny. Joe Rogan, and I'm quoting Joe Rogan, not that he's gonna hear this. He always said like the worst thing that ever happened to you is the worst thing that ever happened to you. So people may say, oh, but I wasn't in this extreme situation. It's like, whatever your extreme situation mm -hmm. was, right? But self-care, right? You're like, what's the basis for it? You'd have me hook, line, and sinker. I'd be like, oh, self-care, this dude's dope, you know? So I totally <laughs> understand that. Absolutely. By the way, you know, I think just important people to know, it's deep for you, mm -hmm. real deep, that you even wrote a book on it. Right. That's so like, correct. you know, I, by the way, we were talking about before the podcast, his little like side thing was, hey, I'm going to write this book and publish it about self-care. So <laughs> people can go out there and kind of look at that, um, you know, so like it's it's pretty wild. And if we're investing in people, right, like here's like a high functioning character who I know like business is not going to be something that throws you off. You're like, you know, I'm not you know, overseas in the military. I'm chilling, you know, so I, I get that. That's pretty dope. What about for your partner? Is he still just playing a lot of soccer? Is that his shit, or is he also? Uh, did he read the book? Yeah, he's uh, he's <laughs> nice. He's also. I pre first of all, I appreciate that call out. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. He's also on the self care game. He he dives more into into running. Um, 
Uh, what is that? What do they get? The endorphins for that, right? Every yeah. time I run, I'm like a Clydesdale. I can't run that long. You know, I try my best, but <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. There's other. We actually were talking about that. We were like, as a as a smaller guy, you're like, yeah, but I go a lot further with a lot more weight. I'm like, yeah, I'd make it like two minutes. You know, <laughs> burn out. There's not enough energy in the universe to keep me going that long. <laughs> That's all right. You found you found your other solution, though. Hundred percent. Yeah. So listen, I think it's important for everyone to know where can they find you, and where can they hear about you, and where can they learn about you. Uh, absolutely. So uh, Jet Build. That's literally our, our website. Not uh, dot. Not Jet Build. It's Jet Build. Exactly. So yeah, the yeah. domain is built. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's fresh. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's gonna be the new there. thing, by the way. Everyone <laughs> yeah. else keeps renaming words in technology. You're like, no, no, it's spelled Jet Build, but Jet Build. Right. Yeah. You got to find your your industry and create that as your domain. That's yeah. awesome. That's, what we did, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So Jet Build. That's literally the domain. What about social linked? Yeah, so we got LinkedIn. Also, Jet.Build is there. Uh, and in terms of other social accounts, we're starting to kind of build that. We're starting to ramp up uh, on the marketing and advertising side. Very fresh. Well, listen, I really appreciate you coming through, telling us clearly and concisely what the deal is. To me, this is near and dear to my heart. People better pay attention because construction is slowing down. And in order to have like, you know, to have workflows that are actually working where people are actually seeing it, I bet you're going to immediately see an ROI. Like you're going to know what the deal is on your project. So Absolutely. I think it's something to watch for sure. Absolutely. But I do appreciate you coming through. Tell your cousin, Iron Man, I say what's up. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk soon, all right, brother? Thanks, Eric. Appreciate you got it. it. Of course. You know, that was an absolutely fascinating uh, podcast for me. I've been seeing out in this industry, like it needed to be disrupted so many years ago, right? But like, I think it's what, what's really important is technology has just started to catch up for the ability of what he's doing. Other industries understood it. Other industries got it done. Just think of the idea of like Facebook and Instagram where we all can communicate. We were not doing that in construction. Then the idea which came up, right? So now someone else had a solution. I was talking about the competition, but but the competition has a model that doesn't make any sense to me. Why should you be in my pocket about what the cost is if the amount of information and storage and the ability for it to transfer is really what the value is? So I was always so frustrated with who the competition was out there. And for him, he's saying, look, I'm going to make it more intuitive. I'm going to make it easier to use. And I'm not going to look at how much you're making in order to understand. To me, he's definitely going to disrupt that business. This is definitely a technology that I'm testing and want to put my money where my big mouth is. And this is definitely a technology, if we look at what my thesis is, doesn't make me a better builder, developer, manager, the way you live in my assets. Hands down, this does it. So I'm definitely trying to get down with Jet.Build. I'm definitely going to watch them as they pick up these projects. And I guarantee you hear about them coming up in the next few months that they are changing this game. So let's watch out for Jet Build. And I really appreciate them for coming on and take a look at their site. And in conclusion, this is definitely one that I'm down with. So it gets the E-Breezy seal of approval. 